Welcome back to Conversations with the Lady Millionaire. I am Danielle Nikki Parker, and tonight I have a special guest. She's a lady contractor. She's the lady that I call whenever I can't remember it, whether I put the walls up first or install the mechanics. <laughs> She's the rehab queen herself, Mrs. Cecily Halls. Hey, Miss Parker. <laughs> hey, girl. Thanks What's for up? coming. No problem. So Cecily and I have worked together um, for a, a lot of years, and tonight... I just want you to let the people know what made you choose the career path that's mostly dominated by men, mm -hmm. and what do you enjoy the most? You know what? I, I chose this path. I think the ch path was kind of chosen for me, but I think before it was chosen for me, I think I already had an interest in it. That's where my mind was going. My, my godmother was a contractor for the city of Philadelphia. Okay. And I never even thought about it until like a few weeks ago. And she was one of the only black female contractors for the city of Philadelphia. But as a kid, I would drive by brownstones and I would be like, oh, this would be a perfect apartment. I love this. I love that. So I think it was kind of like predestined for me to be a contractor because that's my thing. So what do you like the most about it? Um, I like to see this. I love the start of it. Mm -hmm. I love to see the mess. That's what I love to see. And then to see it gradually over time build and become something. But I, I think the best part of it is just seeing the growth of it. Okay. I like to see a project progress and, and, and move and change from a bandominium to a luxury house. From ugly to beautiful. Yes. <laughs> So, um, like I said, you and I have worked together for many years, and you've been there through ups and downs. Mm -hmm. tell, us about, tell us about what you think happened that made the business go down some. You know what? I, what to me, what happened was, you know, Greg likes to give a lot of people chances and opportunities. He gave me a lot of chances and opportunities, and I appreciate it, and I appreciate him for that, but... I think a lot of people that he brought in afterwards, after me, were there for opportunity. They weren't there actually to learn the business. They weren't there to help the business grow. They were there for their own personal reasons, which is not a terrible thing. But if that's what you're here for, say that. You know, Don't say, oh, I'm down with you. I want your business to grow. I want to help you. I want to do this. I want to do that. And do the opposite. You're going behind our backs. You're taking jobs with other people. You're, you know, taking jobs from the company to fill your own pockets. I, I think that was one of the big things because the people he hired couldn't focus on the work that we had. Mm -hmm. um, like pre-COVID, right before COVID hit, you know, we had a lot of different project managers working. They were working different job sites. And I think they were more focused on whatever they were doing other than the work. Um, I was out in Cleveland, and I, I was living out in Cleveland, so I had no idea what was going on here in, in Philly in that construction scene. So when I came back and I would look at the projects, I was looking like, this is a mess. What's going on? But, you know, after talking to some of the people, I was like, oh, I get it. You're here for what you're here for. So, I mean, it happens in business, but I wish, I think... <laughs> I, I, I want to say I wish people would be more upfront, but I think like real legitimate business is more cutthroat than any other kind of business. Yeah. So how important is it to hire? You know, a lot of people say it's not the skill, it's the will. But when mm -hmm. it comes to certain positions. No, it's the skill. <laughs> it's the skill. Especially I can have the will to be an NBA player. That could be my my dream, my desire. I can wake up like, I am going to be shooting threes. I can slam. I can't jump more than three inches <laughs> off the ground. So I have the will, but I don't have the skill. Right. And I, I think that's what gave me an edge because I was willing to learn every component of construction. Like, it, it was exciting to me to learn every, like, when I learned something new, I'm like, oh, yes. Can't wait to use this. Can't wait to use R30 in insulation. This is going to be exciting. Yeah, I can never remember R19, R30, yeah. whatever. I just call you whenever I need to know. Like, they need insulation. <laughs> I feel like as a female, this is something that you really 
have to have like a passion to do because it's, it's a dirty yeah. job. It is. It is. And it's so funny because I went to a job site today and Greg's like, oh, you're coming over to film? I'm like, I was just walking through this dusty abandoned house that they just demoed. So the dust is still all in the air. So I have dust on my clothes, dust on my hair. I was like, I got to go home first. He's like, well, we're going to do it at three. He called me at two. <laughs> like, no, I'll be there. But it's, you know, it's sacrifices. If you like it, you'll do it. I don't mind getting dirty. I know I can hop in the shower. I know I can put on nice clothes and put on some lip gloss and be cute. So I don't mind, you know, <laughs> being just dusty yeah. sometimes. Now, when I speak about a dirty job, I don't only mean about the dust. Mm. I mean, you have to deal with the males, like yes. the men and their egos, you know, of like, why are you here? This is, mm. this is what we do as men. So, yes. so why is a female here? So how difficult is it for you being a female in a, in a male-dominated business? It used to bother me a lot. It, I ain't going to lie. It used to bother me a lot because they would talk down to me and talk to me like I was stupid and that drives me crazy when someone talks to me like I'm stupid that's like my pet peeve like but I started using it to my advantage when I would go to Home Depot and I'm picking up some buckets of mud they're heavy and I would be there standing there and then here comes some guy hey there little lady what you doing over here what you want to get oh I'm just trying to I have to get some of this mud for you know my sheetrock guy oh well let me help you great Fill up my card, I need 13. <laughs> so I used it to my advantage. I started using it to my advantage. So I think once you get past your personal feelings about how they're making you feel and all of that, use it to yeah. your advantage. Yeah. Um, so I know that if, when I first was in those houses every day, because I'm shooting videos for financing, right. you know, I used to come through with my heels on mm -hmm. because, you know, finance is sexy. Right. I had to like start throwing on some combat boots and some hoodies and some sweatsuits because it's Absolutely. like Absolutely. You cannot be on job sites like Yo, that. I used to get in trouble all the time because I would come to job sites, especially in the summertime and flip flops. Mm. That was my, my jam. I would come and flip flops in a sundress. Coming, oh, I'm just checking on a job. And I would FaceTime y'all and y'all be like, Oh, what the second floor look like? I'm like, Oh, I don't know, they don't have stairs. We'll climb the ladder. <laughs> I would go to my car, I would go get my sneakers, tie my sundress up, and climb the ladder. I'm like, all right, this is the second floor. And all I would get was, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> so, well, I, well, I hope OSHA is not listening to me. You, know, you talk about you wearing flip flops to the job sites because you know you're going to get shut down tomorrow. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now I strictly wear boots. Right, right, right. <laughs> Still toe hands. boots. And so, hats. <laughs> what tips can you give someone, a young lady, that's looking to get into the construction business? Uh, what tips can you give her to get started and to get over some obstacles that she might be dealing with? Well, you know what? I started writing a new book. Remember I told you I was writing the new construction book, but I got inspired, I think, by something you said, actually. And I started a new book. Um, I haven't come up with a title, but it's a basically women, girls in construction. Okay. But... Because I started thinking about it, it's hard, it's, it's male-dominated, and the male ego is so fragile. Mm. It's mm. so fragile. And those contractors take everything so personally. They're so sensitive. Um, but what I would suggest to them is you're not going to learn every code. Don't try to kill yourself learning every code, but learn the outline of the code. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're there for the inspections. I learned most of my stuff from sitting on a job site and talking to inspectors. Yeah. So learn the codes, talk to inspectors. Um, make sure you're present on a job, excuse me, job site and walk around, look and see what they're doing. Because if you don't know what they're doing, how are you going to manage them? Right. So me, when I started, I would sit on job sites. I remember the first job site I was on. I was like, what am I doing? So I found a bucket and was just sitting there in a the bucket. It was freezing cold. It was in South Philly, and I would just sit there. <laughs> I would just sit there, and they'd be like, oh, we need something from the store. Hey, they need something from the store. <laughs> well, go get it. Oh, okay. So I would have to go to the store and get it. So I spent a lot of time in Home Depot, so I learned a lot about the materials. Um, 
I got through my first project and I wasn't a manager. I was just sitting there. I guess I was project managing, but I, to me, I was just sitting there. But come the second project, I would see what they're doing. And I would look and like, they didn't do that in the last house. Hey, they're doing something different. What should I do? All right, I'll be there. And I would catch something. I was catching, I was catching on. They didn't do the plumbing right. They didn't do the framing right. They didn't do something right. I would notice from the last job it was different from the job I'm on. So I would just sit and observe and watch. I would go to Home Depot all the time. I would spend hours in Home Depot and just find the pricing, find the material. I'm like, I wouldn't know what one buy is, but now I know what one buy is. You know, certain things they would talk, they were, to me they were talking in code. Just talking to codes like so a foreign know. language. Yeah, I'm like they're just doing that, so I don't know what they're talking about. They're mm-hmm. probably talking about me, mm-hmm. <laughs> but I would learn what they're talking about, and I could now I could confidently go into Home Depot or Lowe's or any store and be like, "All right, my plumber is putting something together. I need some pecs. You know, mm-hmm. you know, I need elbows. I can tell them what I need." and not be scared. Or I can go, if there's no one available to help me, I can just go grab it off the shelf myself. So I think the most important thing to learn is to pay attention, learn your product, and by product I mean the work that you're doing, pay attention, and learn your materials. If you learn your materials, you, like that's half the job. So when you guys are having the construction classes and people ask me all the time, well, can I just tune in virtually? It's like, this is a job you need to learn hands on. There Mm -hmm. are, you do teach the administration part, you know, virtually, but this is a job that you definitely have to learn hands on. Absolutely. I need them to come and look at, I need them. I love the smell of a job site. I love Mm -hmm. the smell of wood being cut. I love the smell of the glue that they use for the plumbing. See, see, see those things right there, you can tell you have a passion for Yeah, it. I love the smell of that. It, even, even the nastiest, dirtiest house, I went in a house and there was pigeons living in there, a lot of them, and it was pigeon shit. I can mm-hmm. say shit on there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm walking through crunching. I was disgusted, but I just love the fact that I was in there. But... It's you know it's it's, it's 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 work but it's fun. You have to find some kind of joy and passion in it. You can't like clock in when you want to look online. Ooh, what is this? And then go away. You need to be there, smell it, touch it, look at it, feel it. Okay, so after we take a break, I want you to tell us about what's next for Cecily and Hammers and Hills. Okay. Hey guys, so tonight's episode is sponsored by Big Wheels Car Rental. So if you're looking to rent a car with no hassle no major credit cards, and great prices, head on over to 4671 Torresdale Avenue and get you a car. Remember, if it ain't big wheels, you ain't rolling, baby. So welcome back to Conversations with the Lady Millionaire. And before we went to break for sponsorship, I asked Miss Cecily, um, what's next for her? Her business is called Hammers and Hills. Mm -hmm. Where do you see yourself in the next five years? Um, I think in five years, most likely I will be sitting back on a tropical island. <laughs> I want to say with somebody's son. <laughs> with somebody's son. Say it, speak it into with somebody's son serving me cocktails. But for the immediate future, um, I have a couple more books to do. Um, I want to do the new construction book. I want to finish that up. And I also have a book for women who are getting into the construction industry. Okay. Um, and teaching. I love to teach. I love I love having construction class. I, it's fun. Yeah, it that. is. It's yeah. pretty dope. I love having class, so. And teaching. I want to teach people. I think because I was looking on Instagram the other day, and I saw so many new female um, contractors, and it was exciting. I was like, yes. Go ahead, girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel partially responsible for it. So I love it. That's dope. Um, so how has your business grown since you became certified as the um, women's minority, minority owned business? Well, you know what? It opens a lot of doors for you. It's more lucrative. You can make a lot more money because you can get government contracts. Okay. And I've just gotten onto that train and I tried. I think the most important thing that I learned is to specialize in something. 
specialize in cleanups, specialize in, I'm not even going to tell you, but specialize in some field that you could be in it and out of it. Okay. Instead of having, oh, the airport needs 15 bathrooms retiled. If you want to specialize in tile jobs, great. Mm -hmm. Specialize in something, and it's, it's super duper lucrative. I get emails five, six times a day from the government saying, oh, we have a contract at this university, at this airport, at this police station. So it's, it's super lucrative. So I'm glad I started. I did it. Um, when I first started the process, I was like, it's a lot of paperwork. And I hate paperwork. <laughs> I hate it. But it's worth it. It's worth it. It was worth it. Yes. So. All right. Can you tell me about a time? Because I, I, I really want to know this. Because I have some of my own stories. Mm -hmm. But can you tell me about a time when you um, went into one of those abandoned buildings and you were kind of like freaked out? <laughs> because I know a lot of the work that you've done has, has been inside of buildings that have been abandoned for yes. 20 years. So mm -hmm. give us a horror story about <laughs> something that has happened to you, because that's one of my biggest fears with going into those properties. So just let us know some Girl, of your horror stories. I got a whole <laughs> lot of horror stories, but, okay, one of them. Pick the funniest one. I don't, I don't know if the raccoon, I think the raccoon one is the funniest. I was in there, and I was doing, I was shooting content. So it was just me and Money, the cameraman. So we just doing content. Mm -hmm. I'm walking through the building like, oh yeah, this is the framing. We made this, we you know, built an addition, it's three stories, come on up. And we go on through the whole house. We get to the top floor. It's not finished, so it doesn't have a roof on it yet. Mm -hmm. It's like the back wall is just framing, so there's no, no wood there, nothing but just framing. So the whole house is cleaned out except for one piece of plywood. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm, oh yeah, this is the house, it's framed up, I lean on the plywood. And then I stand up, and as I stand up, a raccoon, <laughs> to me the raccoon was like six feet tall, but it was about four feet tall, came out, stood up on his hind legs, and was like, shh. Now, I'm with money, <laughs> and he's filming, so when we see him, we both like, ah, so you see the camera fumbling. <laughs> and that's funny. The camera's flipping it over, you hear me screaming in the background. And Money's like, I got to find something to hit it with. I got to find something. But there was nothing there. So me and him are on the top, of the, on the top floor, and we're stuck because the raccoon decides to go lay by the, the stairs. <laughs> so we stuck. We're like, what are we going to do? So he's just laying there. So we're like, you know what? Maybe we could sneak by it. And as soon as we take a step, he stands up. Mm. <laughs> so we're stuck. We're calling people like, hey, what you doing? Can you come by here? They were like, a what? A raccoon? Oh, no, I don't mess with those. Mm. We was calling everybody, the toughest people you could think of. Everybody was like, no, nah, no, nah, I don't mess with raccoons. The raccoon finally climbed up on some framing that was for the back wall, meant for the back wall. And he was looking at us, watching us the whole time, and we watching him. The raccoon happened to lay his head down and turn the other way. I hauled the ass. I just started running. I'm running down. It was... It's three flights, but it's really four flights of mm -hmm. steps you ran. I ran down four flights of steps. I didn't know if money was there or not. <laughs> I didn't know if the raccoon was chasing me. I just was like, I'm going to run until I get on the sidewalk. So I hauled ass down the steps, ran, got on the sidewalk, and money was right there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how he got in front of me, but he got out of there. But that was one of the craziest. Um, Disgusting-wise, <sighs> Cleveland. Uh. In Cleveland, first of all, let me just preface this. Mm -hmm. Cleveland has, is known for a lot of serial killers. <laughs> and you know, serial killers start by killing animals. Right. We went into a house, and this house was filled with dead cats. Mm -hmm. It was trash bags filled with dead cats. Now, my construction guys have cleaned everything, done everything, seen everything. I pulled up on the scene, and I see them running out of the house throwing up. Mm. It was hundreds of dead oh cats in trash bags in the bathtub. They, they were just dead cats everywhere. So I'm sure that was a serial killer's lair. So. But that was the most disgusting thing so I ever saw. let me saw. just ask you, now that you said that, <laughs> how do you go back into another house after dealing with that? 
You just do. I don't even think about it. I just think that was the last house that had the dead cats. This one might have the live bats flying around. This one might have the raccoons crawling on my head. You know, I go in houses, I stop, make noise, and I always tell them, I, I tell everybody I'm going with, look, I don't deal well with um, rodents, mm -hmm. so I have to make noise, or cats. I don't, I didn't kill the cats, but I don't like cats. <laughs> I'm scared of cats. <laughs> Remember we were in that building that cat ran out? Yes, I do. <laughs> I'm afraid of cats, so. This is yeah. why I haven't been back. <laughs> this is why I haven't but been back. It's, you, you never know what you're going to find in there. I haven't found money in a house yet. I wish somebody would leave a house with gold bricks right. in the wall, money right. in the floor, but I haven't found that yet. Well, I, I wish that as well. <laughs> <laughs> so if you can do anything else besides construction, mm -hmm. what would it be? Um, I think I'll be a talk show host. Really? Why? I don't, I don't know, because I like to talk, to, I like to talk, period. <laughs> I, like, I like to run my mouth. I think I would be a talk show host, and I find that I have one of those personalities, people come and tell me things mm -hmm. that I don't ask about. Um, so I think I would be a talk show host. Okay, so what would it generally be about? Like, your conversations, what would they be about? I want to have, like, a, like, um... <laughs> I don't want to be like Ayana because I can't fix their life because I can't fix my own. But maybe Oprah ish. What? Who? Who makes people cry on their shows? You want people to cry? <laughs> I don't want to make them cry. I just want them to just feel their emotion and talk through it and get through it. But That's Ileana. I, I know I always say her name yeah. wrong, but I'm sorry. Well, then I want to have my a show life. like her, and I could be like, not on my watch. <laughs> That's what she always does. Are hilarious. So I thank you for coming by. Thank you. Sharing your stories with us. And from a, a, a um I'm a contractor as well. Yes, you are. But you're a, good, but, you're a great but, contractor. But I'm the one that says, okay, hire them and I'm signing the checks. <laughs> yes. Because but you're I'm great not at that. With yeah. No, yeah. Like especially with doing the financing, I have mm -hmm. to go in, but I go in kinda when it's cleaned out. Yeah, I don't want to walk through when I don't like the smell of properties. The being, old yeah. musty. I don't like that. I don't mm. like what I might be stepping on. I don't. So mm. y'all can That's see I don't have a passion for it. But you still can be yeah. a licensed contractor because and not, you hire people. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You can be a licensed contractor and not have to physically do the work. Yeah. So you know, but, before we go, I don't want to mm. ask you one other question, What's and that? I meant to ask you this. What's that? How difficult is it building a team? Oh my god. Yeah, that's like one of the important questions I wanted to ask you. That's the hardest part, I think. Um, I can know uh, everything about it, but I'm not going to know how this person is going to actually do the work. Right. Because it's either like Cleveland. We had the hardest time in Cleveland. Um, we had the best game plan laid out, and we went out there, and I'm sorry, Cleveland contractors, but either the work was trash mm -hmm. Or they didn't come and do the work. Yeah. It was it was no in between. It was like the ones who were who were available, they were trash. The ones who say, "Oh yeah, I can get to it next week," they never come. And they, I, I, I'm guessing they're good, but that's the hardest part because you never know how someone is going to be until you actually try them out. Because with the in the age of social media. Anybody can put up pictures and say, oh, yeah, I built this house from scratch and just take pictures. Yeah. Um, I like to go, oh, where are you working? I want to slide by there and we can talk about our, our job. I want to see what you're doing. Um, but building a team is hard. You just, I think the most important part about it is to communicate with them what you're looking for. I have, I still have people out in Cleveland that do work for me and they do great work. And I communicated with them, like, we're going to have a high volume. I'm going to pull you from this job to go to this job sometimes. I'm going to have to use you to do something else. You know, I, I communicate that. A lot of people don't like change. They're stubborn, and they say, well, I'm just going to be your carpenter, so I can't help you move anything around. I'm just the guy who lays the carpet. So make sure the whole house is cleaned out because I can't move any furniture. Um, I like people who are flexible. Because I have to be flexible. Right. And my, my biggest gripe with a lot of the subs is 
you want me to pay you on time, but you don't want to show up on time. You don't want to finish on time. You don't want to. You don't want to take suggestions. They're so sensitive. I've been a little lady. I've been doing this for thirty five years, and nobody ever told me. But you're doing it wrong. Right. The code has changed. Mm -hmm. You're doing it wrong, and it's like you have to be a balance and just say it gently and soft enough for them to understand you mean business, but make sure they know they have to do it. So how important is timelines and deadlines? It's everything. You're like with finance, time is money. Yeah. And you know, I know the clock is constantly ticking. So it's like you need to get in and get out as quickly as possible. Um, I learned from you that people are paying as they go when they get their finance loans that they still have to pay monthly. Mm -hmm. So I know, listen guys, we gotta get in here and get out. And I, you have to give them deadlines. Like, and I try to give them a deadline that's a couple of days before my actual deadline, just so I have a little room for error. Okay. So, guys, you heard it from the best. That's <laughs> Mrs. Rehab Queen herself. You can follow her on Instagram, Hammers and Hills. Hammers and Hills. <laughs> Thank you. Thank for you for having by. me. This was fun. Yep. Yep. I can't wait to have you on again. I got crazy stuff to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, next time we'll talk about something else other than business. All right. <laughs> what up, what up, what up, y'all? If you are looking to build your brand or your business, we have your back right now on the Lady Millionaire Podcast, along with my own platform. If you're looking to help build your business, make sure you call the number in the bio, and we are here ready to help.